Hey, this is Judah Mantel for Scene Studio, and in this video I'm going to go over version 0.6.26. It is a great new feature that will really improve your previs workflow that I'm really excited about, as well as a couple other bug fixes that are really important. So I'm going to go over them now. Now, Sceneforge is great for previs in addition to live compositing and on-set virtual production. But previously there wasn't a way to get content out of Sceneforge, content meaning your scenes that you design. So if you decided that you want to use another software, a more complex piece of software such as Unreal Engine or 3ds Max or Blender, there was no way to get the floor plans, the object layouts, and things like that out of Sceneforge, so you either would have to recreate it from scratch or you were stuck using Sceneforge, which of course is never a bad thing. But still, it is important to be able to import and export, and so that is now available. So you can see on the left, the import icon is now changed to import and export. And if you click on that, there's a new option that says export scene. When you click on this, you'll get a new menu that has a bunch of options for exporting your content. So I'm going to go over them now. The first thing is the file name. Of course, this is exactly as it sounds. I'm going to name this floor plan. Then the next option is the floor plan export. This is under content options. Because in some cases, you might not want to include objects that you set up using the floor plan editor. So you might only want to use your light setup and your objects in the scene. Or, of course, in some cases, you might only want to have the floor plan. So you only want to export what you created here. That's what this drop down is for. So you can either click none to ignore floor plan entirely, include to include it in the total export options, or only to exclude everything else except the floor plan. So I'm going to click include for now. The next options are to export the light models, camera models, and track models. Now this is optional because lights and cameras, as well as dynamic paths, outside of Sceneforge have no use. They are quite simply just essentially preview objects of where cameras are going to be in the scene. Because if you think about it, outside of Sceneforge, which has its own way of rendering lights and cameras, any other software, let's say Blender for example, is not going to know that a Sceneforge camera that is mounted on a camera crane is meant to shoot the scene. So keep that in mind. If you are using this for set design and let's say tech viz and you want to keep a record of where cameras, dolly tracks, and lights are going to be on set, then absolutely you're going to want to export these things. Otherwise, keep in mind that they may not be as useful as you might think. It's also worth noting that objects that are hidden in the hierarchy will not get exported. So I'm going to uncheck export lights, but I do want to export the cameras just because we have an interesting crane as well as free floating camera here. So I'm going to delete the track and open the door and just give me an animation really quickly. So now we have something interesting. Now before I click export, there's a couple other things over here under file options. You can choose the model format, which is either GLTF and bin, which stores extra texture and metadata, or GLB. Now these formats are slowly becoming the standard for web-based 3D, and that's why it was important for us to adopt them. In the future, we're going to have other formats such as FBX, OBJ, etc. So you can choose these. GLB is completely self-contained into a single binary file, and GLTF has two files, the main JSON file and the bin file. I'm going to do GLB for now. And the last option is to choose whether or not you want to embed textures. When this is enabled, your resulting file will just be the model file, which has references to the textures baked inside of it. But if you turn this off, the resulting file folder will have extra individual images for all the textures required. Keep in mind that there are some softwares, such as the Windows default 3D viewer, will not pick up textures and sometimes even throw an error if they are not embedded. So just keep that in mind. It really depends on what you want to use these models for and where you're going to use them. In this example, I'm going to click Embed Textures. Now I'm going to click Export Scene. And while that's running, it's important to note that at the moment, because of the way the skeleton system is working, characters, rate characters, will not get exported in your scene. In the future, that will be supported, but just keep that in mind for now. And once that's done exporting, you'll see that in your project folder, there's a new folder called Scene Exports. And in that, you'll either see a folder with all of your models and materials, or in the case of a GLB, which is entirely self-contained, you can see the file by itself. So when I open this up in the Windows 3D Viewer, you can see it takes a second because there's a lot going on in this scene. And you can see now we have our floor plan with our chairs, 
and our cameras. It also exported this other model that I had in the background. Now to show off an example that does not have embedded textures, I'm going to switch to the GLTF and GLB and turn off embed textures. This might take significantly longer because it has to copy the textures from the model to your directory. And you can see now the resulting folder, it separates it into a new folder, has your source GLTF and bin file, as well as individual PNGs for all of your required materials and maps. So again, if I were to open this up in the 3D viewer, depending on the layout and the type of model, it might give you an error if the textures are not embedded, as you can see here. So that is basically this new feature. It is great and it works beautifully well. And I'm really excited about it. Now, moving on to some other changes, it's important to note that I wanted to share in this release. The first thing is that a quick note about the previous release that had the ability to edit materials. I imported this model from Sketchfab and it's a, a head bust, I believe, that was created with like Tilt Brush or Google Poly. And you can see it doesn't have any textures. Now normally you can click edit materials and just edit the material, but because this was a model from Sketchfab, I do not have direct access to the materials. You can see it's in 3D models in a zip folder. So if you want to do that, make sure to extract the folder. And once we have the folder with the textures, either separately or included depending on where those are, make sure to assign them in the model viewer. Now a couple other cool changes in this release is that the file structure has been a lot more flexible. It's been made to be a lot more flexible. So you can see now, this is the file folder of a brand new project. And you can see when it gets generated, you get just an empty folder with your SF doc file. This is just to keep file sizes down and the extra folders will get generated as you need them rather than upfront when you first start your project. So you can see in this example, I have a model I'm going to download from Sketchfab. And over here, you can see there's no other folders inside the project. But when I click download, as I download it, you'll see that the folder gets generated with the file inside. So it's much more flexible and everything gets generated on demand as needed, which will result in a cleaner file structure. And so with that, thank you so much for watching. This has been everything in version 0.6.26. I will see you in the next video.